Welcome. Hello, howdy. My name is Jeremy. I'm Jeff. And uh, together we are What More Could You Want? Thank you for joining us today. If it's your first time, uh, welcome. If it's not your first time, well, welcome back. You made it. We appreciate you having having you back. Absolutely. Yeah, it's been a it's been a crazy week for myself. Uh, Jeff, how's your week been? Calm, calm, good, Pretty good, good, good. Um, I would say that mine has been uh, on any other given week maybe tumultuous, but mm-hmm. this week instead it was just sort of like a beautiful jagged cliff. It was beautiful to look at, but when you're actually the one up on top of it and traversing those those peaks and those valleys, it's getting you know, right footing. <laughs> Puckered up and, you know. Like, trying to get the right footing because it's like, if yeah. I go here, what happens? What, That's right. What will be offset if I. But get this, man. It's really cool when you can be on that jagged edge and you know, well, if I put my foot here, this happens. I know this is a fact because I've been here so many times. Yeah. So if my wife and I are in an altercation of some sort, verbal, I mean, but, you know, if, if we're going back and forth about something, if I just stop myself and just. Mm-hmm. To my own self, I just tell myself, how much, you, come on, you love this woman. Yeah. And right now, you don't understand this woman, but you love this woman. So don't let that understanding escalate into anger. Yes, very right? true. Now, fellas, ladies, that shit ain't easy to do. But I'm hoping today we can shed some light on that and uh, and maybe help you through your next little uh, peak and valley. Right? Yeah. So, Jeff, you have had a nice, smooth week, huh? Not too many bumps. Like, yeah. How's the office? Ones. Good. Yeah. Not too bad. You know, adapting to the times and the changes of these different phases our state puts out that we got to abide by to, you yeah. know, for stay you, open. For you guys that don't know, Jeff runs a uh, a pretty uh, a pretty good sized health club uh, here locally in the St. Louis area. Yeah. And, so uh, we gotta, yeah. he's got some challenges. We got to follow the guidelines as much as I would like to be defiant, but yeah, you know, what good is it going to do? You know, in the long run, I'll put more people to people's jobs in jeopardy and, you know, make people members unhappy. So, you know, well, and potentially we're, people's lives, right? Yeah. Thankfully, we're blessed in a state where we're still staying open. Unfortunately, like some of these other states where they're fighting to keep their doors, you know, we're able to. We just got a, yeah. a few more rules in place that we got to go by. But it's been pretty smooth. A few changes, changes some big things. Staff's been accommodable. Everything's, you know, gone smoothly. Like, yeah. Good, man. No, no, like, you know, bad feedback from anybody. It's just like, you know, everyone's just kind of at the point like, okay, yeah. new, new rule or this little, this little change, this little bump. All right, take it and let's roll with it. Because right what are you going to really do? You can yeah. piss and moan all day long and it's just not going to change itself anymore. So Well, it's going to make you worse. It will change you, but for the worse. Well, yeah, not in a good way. So Right. You know, and that's like what we were talking about earlier, man. The moment that you get into those, those hurdles and those peaks or whatever, if you've been there before yeah and you've always reacted a certain way you're just going to keep doing the same thing but the first time you just question yourself and say wait could i handle this any different way that's it's that's when you begin a whole new journey yeah that's right the new book i'm reading so no one laugh at me as i say what it's not like it's a crazy book but a beginner's guide to uh buddhism oh nice man it's one of the many books i picked up over this past year and it's just like just finished up uh, Stillness is the Key by Ryan Holiday, reading this one. And that's one of the things they talk about, like, you know, you're never going to be perfect. At first, you know, attack the four virtues. Mm-hmm. Most commonly, they say two and three of understanding suffering and, you know, fighting back your desires, bad habits. Like, right. oh, I get home, I'm going to divulge this entire bag of cookies, you know. Right, right. Small little things Yeah, is what it relates to. And obviously, you can grow it from there, but... It really takes it to that point of each day, kind of you put your feet in the ground. I'm gonna, st- I'm gonna try and have my day with kindness. At some point, it may not happen. Yeah. But at the end of each day is, you know, this is a beginner's guide. This is not like you know, someone who's been practicing. But sit there and reflect upon the day of how could I have handled this situation better? As you're talking about, I'm on this peak and I've been here before. I should never be back on this one. Right. How can I evaluate to you know, create this different path so that I end up over here next time when this comes. And it's literally only, I think, 40, 50 pages in. Yeah. You know, I've been literally, well, I just started reading it like last night. So, yeah. Um, but that's what a big part of it is, is understanding that each part of your day, what can you do differently to not end up in those same scenarios to better yourself and understand as you're kind of talking about before we hopped on here, 
you know, how do you love somebody when you're angered or, you know, giving that back. And it completely talks about that. Like in the book too, is suffering is inevitable. Yeah. You have to understand it. You'll have it. Someone else does as the old phrase goes, you never know what someone's going through, you know, yeah. how their day is going. And you kind of relate it in that sense of suffering will always be going on, but how you react to specific suffering can change the outcome within yours. And then maybe it changes the outcome in somebody else's suffering because of your correct reaction. Well, to when, when someone is suffering and you respond out of suffering, right? So that is to say that you respond with sympathy, maybe, and not empathy, mm-hmm. right? When you respond with that same suffering, you're, you're making it worse. You're adding to their pile and they're adding to yours. You're going to take it home. Yeah. But if you meet it with, with compassion, I understand Mm -hmm. this, this really sucks for you right now. You're in a lot of pain. Um, what can I do? Yeah, that's it. That's all you got to do. You ain't got to fix shit. You don't know if they're right or the wrong, because like last week we said, you're not God. That's not your decision. It's, it's in them and their own best interest if they're right or wrong. And you're, and you're not going to fix it. You're not. You're not no. going to. You just have to be there. Uh, take it from somebody that's needed somebody to be there for me in the past many, many times. And I still do at times. You're not going to fix me or change my mind about what I'm thinking about, what I'm writing about, what I'm saying. But if maybe you come and provide another point of view out of love and compassion, it'll stick around long enough. Trust me. Yeah, and then eventually you'll be like, ah, oh, yeah, yep, they were right. It, but if you come in, time. if you come in swinging, you're wrong, you're wrong. I'm right, you're wrong. I'm virtuous, you're not. That doesn't get you anywhere, right? Yeah, and yeah. that's kind of what I'm reading is like, you know, all your preconceived notions, and that's some of the things I was getting from uh, stillness is the key is your preconceived notions going in, which is very hard not to do. You're going to have your opinions is to drop those because you can only be adding to the flame of what's going on versus right sitting back and, and, and doing that. And that's a big part of like, you know, very deep. And it's a very easy read. If anybody wanted, I bought it because I wanted to understand the religion more. I like many of the things I read aspects come from Buddhism, Taoism, all these different things. I wanted to understand yeah. the religion more. So I was like, well, shit, might as well get right. it's something very simple. Yeah. But that's the whole concept, basically, of, you know, like, Buddhism is, you know, be kind to yourself, kind to others, don't kill, you know. Yeah. Kind yeah, they're all wonderful strength. virtues. And, others, and then you can get into the, well, you know, there's dynamics of the four, and then it goes into the eight, and then it goes from there. Um, but it's all those different types of things of really looking at yourself. Mm-hmm. What can you fix within you? then potentially that will hopefully filter on as I talked last time that I got a ton I need to work on as I'm reading this, I'm thinking in my head scenarios that have happened in over the past couple months of not good moments of me. Okay. What could I have done differently? This is what I should have done. This is how I need to be or scenarios that like, you know, at the gym, we got TV, we got TV in the lobby area and I can hear it. And it's like, Oh, I was literally hearing what was ever on. I'm like, Oh, in that scenario, I was applying what I was reading to just a TV show. Yep. But if you start focusing on those types of things and seeing that, it's just like you were saying, you can really transition and turn things around that, oh, and you know, at that moment, instead of responding like that, even though it's a fictitious show, it's a mm-hmm. script, yeah. it's for that. In real life, obviously that wouldn't fly. This is how it should be approached. It, it, yeah, it it's like a synchronicity you. of sorts. Yes, and right. it, and it kind of gets you on that wavelength of thinking of, wow, I'm not doing that. Yeah, I should do this, or oh, hey, I've been doing a lot better of this. Right. Okay, and then it's kind of like honing in on as you get a little bit more fine tuned. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So let's apply that then. Let's go and integrate that into our days at home and at at work. Right. So you come home and the wife is is you're upset about something whatever hasn't been done or whatever's been done is wrong. Mm-hmm. Guys, we've all been there. Yeah. And the first thing you do is lash out. Hey, uh, maybe you're passive aggressive about it, you know, and being smart, being funny. But she has had a day of her own, and then she, in respond, or in, in return, responds to you out of anger. Yeah. And lashes back out at you. Mm-hmm. This is going to go one of two ways. <laughs> it's going to get well, yeah. a lot worse. Or you're going to be the bigger self 
that's, I mean, the bigger self out of the selves that you can be, okay? The diffuser. You're going to tell yourself in that moment, this shit isn't worth it. I love that person too much yeah. to let this co- toxicity come between us. So right now I'm going to stop this thing and I'm going to make her smile. Mm-hmm. I'm going to make her laugh. I'm going to apologize. I'm going to do it sincerely. Not because I think she was right or wrong. That's not my job. I'm not God. Mm-hmm. But because you know that she has the right to feel differently than you do. Yeah, it always, always goes back to we're allowed to have different opinions. Yes. We do not always have to agree. Even with your friends, your coworkers, your spouse, your kids, you will yep. always have that. But you need to be accepting of, of both sides. Yeah. So check this out. Let's act like you got a conveyor belt. And it's going two directions. It's going to and from. One to your significant other and then one back to you. You're giving it just shit. She's giving it shit. Mm -hmm. You do the same. Just keeps adding up on that conveyor belt. Keeps going back and forth. Run out of space. What if you stop and then she still gives shit? But but you don't. You don't. You don't retort. You stop. Maybe she does again or I I guarantee within two or three turns of that conveyor belt, the proverbial one, you know what I'm talking about. Mm Mm-hmm. That shit's gonna stop, yeah. And you're well, both you're going to come around, putting it on there. Yeah, and that's like yeah. my wife's told me I've done that, and I have. And I'll project like when I've Fuck, had who hasn't bad days, and that's what I've tried to make a conscious effort is if I have a bad day at work or something's really bugging me, spin it to a little bit better of way of explaining it, like one of our. Uh, Heater units, AC units, was out in the building. Right. Called the dude. This dude, Brandon, is badass. <laughs> yeah. I should tell him listen. What's, what's the name of the company? Icon Electrical, I think. It's Icon. Icon. I okay, think Electrical cool. is the right. name of it. But HVAC. Dude's yeah. been out before, and I felt bad the last time because he had to be, it was in the rain. and He was out there one day, all day in the rain. Oh. And then the next time he came, thank you, it was a nice sunny day. It's like, dude, hey, man, uh, I always felt bad. He's like, dude, it's my job. And he goes, I got an umbrella. like a ma- I can magnet to things. And, yeah. dude, it's huge. It keeps me dry. And he was up there almost all day and in the afternoon. And he's like, yeah, man. He goes, so, you know, I got to do this. Everything else is fine on these. That one back there, you know, this, they're older. Need to replace this and this. And he took some pictures. He goes, I wanted to show you what I was talking about. And this is all rusted. I'm like, oh, and he's like, he's feeling bad that he's telling me this. But, the, you know, I'm like, hey, man, I'm just happy you guys could come out in less than 24 hours of calling. The one, you know, called there. Might be able to get a guy out today, if not uh, tomorrow morning. I'm like, hey, I get it. You guys are probably swamped. Get get you here when we can. We'll be okay. Right. And it's just that the one heater's not working, so the back half of the building is, like, in the low 60s. You know, right. so it's like, if you're going to be back in the weight room or you're in the plotties, you need to, you know, if you're not a warm body, layer up. Right. Get a little sweat, but... I was telling her, she's like, oh, how's your day? I was like, yeah, you know, might have said that working. It's like in the 60s. I think they said, you know, might have been in the 50s the other day when it was really, really cold. But I'm like, you know, yeah, we're getting it fixed. Right. But I could have been like, oh, you know. Yeah, dude. Could have easily just been stupid. You know, heaters out, got this. They're so old. These need to be replaced. But, and I've tried to make a bigger conscious effort of when I'm talking about my day of, yeah, that went on, but, you know, not a big deal. You know, we're getting fixed, taken care of. or yeah, You don't want to put that negativity on her. I'm, and I'm trying to be right. more aware. I actually wrote, and, you know, the things I write when I journaled the other day of, I think it was the same day after last week. It might have been Wednesday last week because I texted you about what I was reading in the final bits of the stillness is the key. And I wrote of things that I notice these great leaders because it talks about, you know, uh, Churchill. Tiger and his mindset, it talks about different athletes, world leaders, artists, and their mindsets and their writings. talks about the Vinci and the things and the things they saw, and also Stoic, you know, great, yeah. a lot of Greeks and stuff like that. And things that they deal with, especially the leaders, way worse than we do. Like Churchill going through two world wars. Yeah. Yeah. And we're sitting, you know, you can take it as many ways, but COVID ain't as big as the World War One or two. Especially right, with, yeah. you know, Pearl Harbor being it yesterday. Yeah. You know, what happened that day and what escalated to those things. But, like, trying to make that conscious effort of when I say something of my day to put it in it as it's just let it roll off. Yeah. That, oh, it's not so bad. Yeah. Cool. Because all the other units are working. We got heat. It's a little cool in the building. Yeah. Big deal. Dude, check this out. This is so wild that you said all this. 
So within the last week since we recorded, uh, my uh, my furnace went out. <laughs> the same day, my hot water heater went out. Yeah, well, like they're not on the same circuits. They're ones totally separate. I go to pull out of my uh, my garage to go to the hardware store get some stuff to try to garage spring broke. <laughs> no, the sensors at the bottom went out, so it wouldn't close. Oh, and so I'm sitting in my driveway. It's a safety thing. Yeah. I'm sitting in my driveway. <laughs> And I'm contemplating, what's going on? What is what am I doing here? They came in. They come in three, so you should be good. Right, right. So, so, but all in one day, you know. And I'm thinking, first thing in my mind wasn't, oh, I need to suppress negative. It was none of that. The first thing in my mind was, I'm sure glad it's a nice day today, because it was only maybe in the 40s, and so it took two, three. Was it three nights? No, Mm -hmm. three days, two nights, I think. No furnace. Yeah. I got a little space heater for my daughter's room yeah. where she's at. It's a little cooler. The rest of us, we turned the fire on. We were fine. So then yesterday would have been that last day or the day before. I'm sorry, the evening before yesterday. So I, I have a buddy of mine come over and he's a, uh, like a home specialty, anything mm-hmm. with your house, heating. Jack of all trades guy. Yeah. It's actually some of you know him from, from the gym. It's Jim. Oh yeah. yeah I know Jim. So Jim, uh, Mr. Fleming comes over and, He's looking at it, and we are both just like, what the hell, you know? <clears throat> I've already replaced a couple parts on the furnace. Haven't even been able to tackle the hot water heater yet. I'm just like, well, I guess you better boil some water if you want to take a bath. Cold training. Everybody get your ass exactly. out. Exactly. <laughs> That's what I've done every single day is just an ice-cold shower, and it's not like a little warm cold. Oh, dude, it, I it's love, just cold. I'm telling you, you guys, a yeah. little side note here, not to yeah. interject, but I'm telling you there's something very invigorating, clearing, Something about cold water. I, I yeah. even if you do it for like a ten second stint at the end of your shower, I'm telling you, I just yep. kick it to cold. Like I have it just on just enough, literally, to get pressure so that soap can come off of my body. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so anyway, yes, I will second that. The cold showers do wonderful things for you, but when you have no other choice, it can become a little irritating, a little um, troublesome. Well, or, especially to others who don't want to yes, partake. Exactly. So uh, anyway. So he's piecing, he's putting everything back together, and we're just basically thinking that it's the inducer motor, right? It's the spinning part that makes yeah. the the electric or the thing the thing work. And so we're doing that, but as he's sealing something up, he hears like a sucking, like a something like that, right? I know it's odd, but that's the noise. And then he takes the cover off, and goes to put it back on. He hears it again. He says, "Where's the exhaust and the intake for this?" And I was like, "Well, it's right there outside of us, you know." So we go back upstairs, go outside, and uh, look in the exhaust. Well, it's got steam rolling out of it. We know it's working. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> well, the intake and in, intake inlet mm-hmm. faces down. I had to take a light and shine up in there. It was full, probably about twelve to fourteen inches of mud dauber nest, oh. all dead and dried up. But that air, it, it would the furnace would kick on and it would try so long, and then it'd say, "Yep." Oh, can't get air. Sorry. And so it, it's safety. To kick safety. It. So after three times, it completely just shuts off. Dude, they got, so, well, yeah. It had mesh on it. The mesh just wasn't fine enough. Yeah. They, they, most of them do, but. Pff, right. Yeah. Dude, I think a mouse could squeeze through some of the meshes on those yeah. things. Yeah. So anyway, so. I was assuming a mouse got in there and died. Nah, <laughs> man. So I come inside <laughs> and just take. both of us, you know, just awesome. Great day. I still haven't got my water heater fixed because it doesn't come in stock until tomorrow. So I'll do that and then go get it and install it. I fixed the garage door. But in doing all of these small tasks, I found some very, very odd comfort in that it was breaking up my days. It was giving me something else to do. It wasn't just barrel brands. A new purpose. It wasn't just what more could you want. It wasn't just the day in, day out grind, getting the kids to school, band, all that kind of stuff, it was something different. And I think that it was given to me because I needed it. Yeah. You know, I really do. I think I needed something to get me out of my norm, out of my comfort zone, and just hard enough to where it's like, I don't really know about this, Mm -hmm. but all right, let's go. Let's try it. Yeah. You know? And that's, I had to replace, you know, a while back, kind of that same feeling of uh, the cable that lifts your garage, you know, the motor that turns, the piece where it comes around and it connects and you tighten it to keep tension it literally sheared off Ooh. so i was like oh my god what am i gonna do and i'm like all right well i can go down 
And I'm like, I'll just grab the other one because I got the third car stall like you do, and I took it down because that's where my gym area is, so I don't have that overhead. I don't got to worry about right, hitting it right. and breaking the motor. So I t- completely took all that down in the basement. I'm like, oh, well, damn, the thing's not long enough. Yeah. Okay. I got that. That's okay. Same part. So I just cannibalized the tension mechanism, took it up and put it and did all those things. And it's just like, it's satisfying to be able to do those things. Yes. You know, kind of re-engineer MacGyver or something, just yeah. cannibalize something because you had it. I think it takes you back to a primal but, yeah. state almost. But it, it's in that moment, it's distracting, but it's, it gives you purpose. But then at the same time when I was doing that, like, how blessed am I to be able to still do this that... I'm fixing a garage door in my house. Yeah. I have a house, simple enough. Right. With a garage. You know, there are people yeah. who have houses who don't have garages. And you have a button that makes it go up and down sometimes. <laughs> yeah. But I've had other right. issues with yeah. garages, you know, normal people do. But, it, yeah, when you have those little mishaps and things, it kind of gives you a purpose. Like in reading about Churchill in the book, he they talked about, you know, he was so in between – being in government or the wars and things like that. Um, he needed hobbies. Yeah. So he took up painting then brick lane because all he would do is read, he'd write, do his government stuff. But he, you know, when he was working in government, he would literally work himself to a sickness almost to you. Yeah. And people are like, yeah, if you don't do something physical, you will run yourself out. Yeah. So then he got in brick lane. He's like, oh, I carry all these bricks and he make fences and, yeah. But not. And then he got into painting and he would go look at museums and he'd be like, Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can recreate what I saw. Right. You know, talking about how cameras existed. Um, but right. he would go then try and recreate and he was finding peace and new purpose in life. And I think yeah. that brings a good point of what you're saying is you may have done something for a while in life, and maybe the universe, the world's telling you it's Time for a new purpose, a new journey. You know, you step away from a job, you end a relationship, or you take that leap of faith to start your own company or whatever it is. You're just creating a new purpose in life. It's not that you're completely giving up on other things. It's just time to, I think I need to find something else to do to reinvigorate myself to yeah. give life. And yeah. Churchill and probably would not have lived, that's what, the, you know, reading what, uh, you know, what they wrote, Probably wouldn't have lived as long as he would, what right. he did, if he did not have those moments in downtime between government when he got removed and he got back and so forth. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I'm, I'm sure that's 100% accurate. Uh, and I think that in, in hindsight, looking back, these, um, these tasks or these things that have been keeping me overly occupied, even on top of things, you know, we just had a big sale that had me just jumping through the roof all day, every day for like the last uh, six days, I think. But even with all that stuff going on, I've still been able to stop myself, tell my wife I love her, Mm -hmm. you know, give her a hug, let her give me a hug, whatever it's going to be, and then get back, get back at it, right? There's no self-pity. There's Mm -hmm. no, there's none of that. There there are opportunities to learn a couple things about a couple things. Yeah. You know, it's taking a moment to slow down for those things. Like today, same thing this morning. I got, I worked out for my one morning client as soon as he got done. I had everything packed up. I was going to just run out the door, and I was like, oh, they were sitting on the couch looking at some stuff, so I sat on the couch with them real quick. And then um, my uh, wife's getting our daughter's cereal and stuff, and then my daughter does the, what's it called, the Advent calendar, get the chocolates oh, or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah, so she was doing this. She goes, oh, no, we got to do the chocolate. And the kindness of her heart, she will break that sucker up into three pieces and give – my wife, myself, and her. She goes, pick one, and I, I'll take the smallest. And then sure. she'll pick up, and she'll, she'll be like, no, I want you to have that one. You know, oh, like I was yeah. working out the other day. She did it and brought it to me, and I'm like, oh, no, I'll get it after. No, no, I'll take it now. Like, okay. Yeah. And those little things. But, like, if I would have rushed out the door, mm-hmm. I wouldn't have got to get my chocolate. She And she literally would have saved it until I got home tonight. Yeah. Dude, like, that's the beauty about children. You know, but it's I got to see them a little bit more. Yeah. And then I, I still got to work. I still got everything done I needed to do. The business didn't fall under. The world didn't end. Yeah. And I think that's kind of a, a hard reality that a lot of us, and I get very focused when I'm doing something and I don't want to stop. Of course. And I know you, you, I know you can truly explain to that, you know, to that parallel, but it's that take a moment for a second. And I'm trying to get better at that too, not to be so 
ingrained and so focused that you don't see those other things for like, as we rewind back to what we were talking about, when you're having those disagreements, arguments that all those other little things that you love that person for, and you got this one little bleh, blip in the whole yeah. timeline, you see those things and not the, you know, hatred that's spewing just for the moment of whatever has got you both enraged, yeah. you know, and it's, but that was awesome. Got to work today and I was like, oh, you know, this and that. And I was like, man, it's good. Got that. It just made for a really great day. Simple, good. you know, like driving there and like, you know, probably had the usual traffic, but if anything, it just, it just bounced off. Cause it's like, yeah. And so, same you, thing. so you gave, you were able to get out of that where Jeff wasn't giving the world the best Jeff. Like now you're getting uh, a little closer. Uh, and on the way here, you know, I was like, you know, driving and, you know, I got to, I take the highway to get here and people are like, Phew. So it's like, yeah, it's curving. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, get in front of me. I'll go. Like just nothing. Yeah. Those and I think and it's, you know, and I, not every day is going to be that way, but it, I'm right. trying, as I say, to make that conscious effort of like, it's like one of the first couple pages in that book is you put your feet on the ground when you wake up. I'm going to start my day with kindness or be the best me. Right. And if you don't reevaluate and look at yourself at the end of the day and say, what could I have done better? And it's no different than I interpret it as a lifter. If I'm filming, I'll film my lifts. If I have lifts in my workouts and oh, okay, cool. Oh, okay. Yeah, I should have been here a little better position broke here. I'm reevaluating what I just did to improve myself. So I would encourage everyone to take those moments at the end of every day. A lot of people encourage you to write them. Mm -hmm. You know, I've just started to visually go through in my head like, hey, what did I do? But I wrote and what I write in my notebook, I put in there the other day, like things that I know I need to consciously work on. And so then hopefully every time I write there things I've read or whatever, I decide to put some stuff to paper. I'm building upon what I know I physically or, you know, personally need to work on. Right, right. Yeah, I want to go back to the, the kid thing, man. You, you got me thinking about something. So, you know, a lot of times kids, they like they want to do something for you. They're like, oh, hey, yeah, you can have my food, right? Mm -hmm. And we're like, oh, no, 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 we don't know. You don't need to do that, blah, blah, blah. But I think that the more that we do that to children, mm -hmm. not you or me, all of us, because yeah. we all do this, Big we're all guilty of it. Um, if a child is trying to give you something or is no different than if an adult is trying to give you something or do something for you and you're, you're standing off, you God, no, I, I can do that. I got it. I'm doing this. They're showing you love. Mm -hmm. You're not accepting the love. You need to see that action as a gesture of love and compassion. And maybe if we don't stifle other people from doing that so much, they'll do it more. Yeah. Right. And mm -hmm. then maybe you'll do it more. And somebody else to do it more. It just caught my interest, man. I just no, I, and up. I think that's true. Like, kids are in their purest form, and they don't get screwed up. Not saying this in a bad way, but we all get a little, you're going to, we all get screwed up in life. Yep. But I, that's part of our own journey, but realizing that we don't want to try to instill our bad habits into the people around us. And like I said, things I'm trying, like, you know, if my wife points out, it's like, Okay. Yep. Or like trying to catch myself, as we talked about last time, you should be able to make every decision within seven breaths. And I'm trying to apply that. I should give a good reaction or response within less than seven breaths versus you say something and I just go. Right, right. Should not be the, you know, start of a gun. So you're saying to that you can wait up to seven seconds. You don't have to give a response right away. I'm, you know, I'm taking yeah. that seven breaths and stuff. My wife will get annoyed. She goes, why do you do that breathing? I'm like, because... If I get a little agitated or something, I take very deep breaths. Yeah. and But it just calming. And Slows you down. Yes. And that's what it really is. Same thing like doing my workout this morning. Had a little AMRAP, rest, AMRAP. And it's like, okay. Right. And in between, it's really focusing on that deep breathing to calm my body down. Not mentally, but physically. Yeah. It's three minutes is not a long time when you want a full rest. You know, right. You can recall. Right. Totally. But getting back into that, it's like, okay. Here we go. Yeah. This is what I need to do. Very nice. And going from there kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, man. I think uh, I think it's critical to be able to step away, step outside, and look at the situation for what it is. Mm -hmm. And if it's not one that's violent or disruptive to, you know, your way of living, 
you know, your healthy way of living, then it probably doesn't deserve anger. Yeah. It, it, it probably deserves thought, right? And yes. some discipline and, okay, some hard conversations. But when you bring anger into it and nobody's being hurt, and nobody's having their birthday taken from them, what good does that anger do mm-hmm. for anybody, especially the person that's angry? Because yeah. it just makes you look like a horse's ass to everybody else, and then you got to calm down, and then you got to apologize, or maybe you don't, and that makes it even worse. But I mean, I think that we all need to be able to step back, yeah, you know, and and truly look at the situation as data, as if we're all little scientists in our own little minds, you know. Well, I I think that's a good way of putting it that you should be running experiments on yourself, yeah, collecting this data that. What do I need to do to better myself or not repeat this scenario, not end up on that peak? Because too many people, we're all guilty of this. We're creatures of habit. That's yeah. where success is truthfully bred is habit. Right. But what bad habits are we doing that are enabling other things to be more successful or well, growing in those things? I think something we talked about last week. I mean, folks, if you haven't listened to, uh, to episode 27 yet, I think that's it. Yep. You guys definitely should. I think um, I'm... Very proud of that episode, and I will say that I think that's the best episode that Jeff and I have recorded yet. That was a really good one. Yeah. Really good. Um, so having said that, um, I, I, I think that if – okay, let me, let me think. I want to say this poignantly. Okay. I don't yeah. want to just spit this out. I want to take my seven breaths, you know. <laughs> um, so I'll, I'll do that while I say this. Through all the adversity – and all the turmoil that I've encountered throughout this last week, which is, you know, it's it's first world problems. But there's still problems at the end of the yeah. day when the kids are sitting there looking at you about a shower or a bath, about heat, you know, it's cold. Nobody lost their mind. Everybody said, well, this is our task, and we got to move forward, right? If one of us would have thrown a fit, it could have potentially thrown off the balance of the whole operation. A spread. Right. And that operation was we had a business to run. It's our household. Yeah. We had to look at it like that. How do we keep the doors open? How do we keep the lights on? All right. And that's what we did. And nobody went crying to grandma. <laughs> Can I stay at your house? Because, you know, no, we made things work as a team. But had I been in my old mindset, the one of just a short year, two, three years ago, I guess, um, we, I would have been out of my mind. Like the world was conspiring against me. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, why, why me? Why is all this stuff happening to me? But because of the, the work and the dedication to the work, mm-hmm. the meditation, the, the, the clean eating, the whole thing, um, I was able to stay more on track through adverse situations that were complete curveballs. Yeah. So think about that. You know, you get thrown a complete curveball and you're able to, you know, sidestep it like you're in the matrix. Yeah, and, and I think that goes into saying, like, we would not have been able to handle any of the stuff that's going on now. Yeah. And I know certain people will not, but the next big bump in your life, do, you know, besides COVID later in life, God forbid, I hope there's none, but inevitably there will be some bump. But you will be better prepared. There's a lot. There's a couple memes going around, and a thing is instead of looking at 2020 as a horrible year, look at it as you stepped outside your comfort zone. You grew. You yeah. adapted. You found and worked on the weaknesses to make yourself stronger, so you can attack 2021 better. I'm paraphrasing, sure. To that, but it's true. It is. You can truly yeah. look back on this year as we're what do we get? What are we, day eight? So mm-hmm. we got yeah 23 days to go. Yeah. That. You can look and say it's been an utter shit storm, but even this past year in the history of, let's just go with America, Mm -hmm. 1776, it's not been as bad as any other time in life from that point on. Right. Yeah. We were throwing a curveball and we didn't know how to react. But let's rewind time. If we didn't have the advancements in medicine, it'd be the Spanish flu or whatever all over again. Right. You know, it it sucks, but you got to use it as teaching points to move forward that if the next bump comes, you're well adapted and well versed that I can take this. Well, we can deal with this. I I just watched a movie with my family 
Um, and it's about a, a young drummer um, and his girlfriend. And they tour. <clears throat> and they're releasing an album. And they're playing live one night on stage. And he loses his hearing. Like 80% of it while he's on stage. Just like that. So he freaks out, right? Ends up going to a doctor. And they tell him, like, listen, it's not going to get better. It'll probably get worse. And then he's playing on stage. He you know, can barely hear. You know, it's more feel than anything. He loses the rest of his hearing. And this, he goes into a home and it's, it's for, oh, he's also an addict. He's a recovering addict. Mm-hmm. So he goes into this addict home because he loses his mind and everybody's scared he's going to relapse. Yeah. Well, everybody there's deaf. Well, this guy doesn't want to learn how to be deaf. He wants everything to go back to normal. Yeah. Okay. The doctor or not the doctor, the main sponsor guy for the house tells him, he says, I'm going to put you in a room with a notebook and a pencil, and I want you to write down anything you think about. This guy goes into the room and can't even sit down. He has he's so much energy in him and no way to get it out because he doesn't know how to be still with his own thoughts. Yeah. He doesn't need know how to be without interaction. Mm-hmm. And why I'm saying this is because if we as humans cannot sit in our most truest form in simplicity and silence, what the fuck are you going to do when you have to? Yeah. What are you going to do when you're injured, you lose hearing or you lose sight or you lose any of your other faculties? I don't know. Yeah. Are you going to are you going to find out then what you're made of or are you going to try to start learning now? Because if the fear of silence if that scares you, mm-hmm. that cripples you, you have to understand that you can get better. You don't have to have all that data in front of you all the time. No, and that's it's, yeah. it's dude, phenomenal points. Like half the stuff that I've been I've been reading over the past couple months, all that same stuff of stillness like a uh, gentleman reached out to me the other day asking, like, you know, and he's he's in the medical world dealing with this, and I'm sure he's stressed out, mm-hmm. as he said. And he's like, man, what are some things that have been helping you? And I'm like, dude, well, you know, I gave him some book recommendations. So, and these are things that started to make me aware of what I needed to do to help myself. And I think it's more of him as just calming his mind yeah. to what he sees all day. But no, like all these books that I've read, especially this year, but if you cannot find stillness, like you're saying, you cannot be in your own thoughts, you truly are always at war. Yep. And not... You're fighting yourself. The battle of good and bad. Yeah. Wrong or right. You're literally going to be so agitated. And that's, I believe, what, you know, people... Some people who have mental illnesses, obviously, they are diagnosed with this. But some of the stuff, which are minor cases probably could be able to be more nulled yeah. if you can sit with your own thoughts. And that's a very hard thing to do. I'm an example of that. Yeah. I, I had to have medication to settle myself down for a solid two years. Yeah. Until finally I could sit and calm my, my own self down. It was hard for me to meditate this morning. I did it after I got done working out, waited till I kind of calmed myself down from breathing Right. Laid on the garage floor, and I was just kind of like, you know, thinking of things, and I'm like, you know, that shouldn't be in your head. And it's kind of like Sam talks about, let the thought come in, push it out, get it back. And even yesterday, like, when I was meditating on the floor, my wife was doing some of her stuff for work. My daughter was in the other room, FaceTime and playing a game with a friend. I can hear her, but I wasn't taking it in and paying attention. I could just hear the voice, and I just laid there, and I was just very calm. I was doing my breathing, and... Sitting there, and I could just hear in the kitchen. I was on the living room floor, literally, like, laying completely out. I had my hands on my kind of upper stomach. And just that. I can hear the fish tank. It's got the constant water. I could hear those things, but I wasn't acknowledging anything other than the sounds. Yeah. There was no words. I hear the water kind of, like, bubbling. I just, that, and then I got so relaxed and thought. I was like, oh, man. And I got done with doing however many rounds I did, and I just sat up and sat there relaxed, and I was like, oh, I feel really good. Yeah. You know, and it's no different, but meditation is a huge thing that can help calm the mind because if you can't even sit still for five, ten minutes to listen to something, 
how are you going to do if you had, if the phone was pulled? Yeah. You know, could you even sit and read? I like reading because it calms me. Like, yeah. And I can read even if, like, the other day I was reading, my wife was driving. She goes, really, you're going to bring your book? And I'm like, I'm just going to read until we get there. You two are just going to listen to music. She's playing. And so I just read, and that's when I finished off the book. And I was like, she's like, how can you read with all this going on? I'm like, I can hear the radio. I can hear you two mm-hmm. talk or if you're singing, and I can pause and conversate back. Yeah. You just get very focused in on it. You know what I think the best part about reading is? Aside from the knowledge that you gain. Yeah. You can't do a damn thing else. No, I have to only sit and do this. I get on an iPad. I can sort of screw around. Yeah. Right. I uh, get out a newspaper, you know, what well, I, I can do whatever. Possibilities, endless. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. I, I, I like reading. I've been doing it several times throughout the day. Like I want to eat lunch and I'm like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to eat and read. So I'll get my book out and I'll sit there and I'll read and eat. I'm finding it more and more relaxing to do, you know, and, as you've kind of changed your diet, I've been trying to do that instead of, okay, playing on social media, which I don't have to do as much because it's not a part of my job. Right. Um, I'll get on it, you know, a few times a day, but then I'm not on it for a while. I'm like, cool, I won't be on it for how many hours? I'm like, I'll use it to other times. I'll maybe read some of the, like, different emails I get from some of these authors that send out, like, weekly or daily right. emails. I'll read some of those, and then oh, I'll get back and read the book or – Listen to another meditational talk on Sam's app or, you know, find another podcast that's more enriching than just social media crap or just sitting in front of the TV. And obviously, obviously we all need those moments of just mindless TV or whatever, but finding more things to try and do like that are actually better meant to myself than just let's put it on to sit there and be like, cool. You know? Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think that there's a definitely a uh, beauty in being able to get lost in a TV show or a movie or something. I think that it can be therapeutic it, when done in moderation, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I absolutely think that. But I, I also think that it can quickly get out of hand, and that can become yet another source of your, your comfort. Mm-hmm. Whereas it should just be distraction or education, you know, um, and move on, do your next thing. Yeah. You know, you know it's what it is, but... You know, it, it's funny. I've got a lot of friends that they watch a lot of TV, I guess, because, I mean, they're telling me about, oh, I watched this whole series, I watched that whole series, I did this. I'm like, man, I wish that I could find a, a way to settle my brain down enough to sit and watch an entire series of something. That would drive me up a wall, Jeff. I, I can like it for me, but it's mostly, it's got to be at night. Yeah, so I'll watch stuff on the iPad, like when we're laying in our daughter's room, getting her to fall asleep. It's just our hat. We're laying there, and then we'll go to our room. But one that relaxes me, but that's about the only time, like, I can focus on it. And then half the time, too, when I'm already passed out, I just fold it down. And then when it stops playing, at some point, I either take it off or I will fall asleep, and it literally falls off. Right. <laughs> off yeah, me, totally, yeah. You know? But, um, no, that's a hard thing. But now if you're watching shows like – documentaries, things that can be enriching because some people are more visual. Sure. Yeah. I'm, I can retain way more seeing something obviously as most people can as proven, but yeah, yeah, I could watch documentary, documentary after one after another. Yeah. So long as it keeps me pulled with yeah. it. But, oh, yeah. I, I get it. But to sit there and like, oh man, this weekend I knocked out, you know, all the season of, yeah. you know, Netflix just released us watch all this. Right. Pff, yeah. There's no way. There's no way, dude. Right. And I'm not trying to knock on people to do it. If that's your thing, that's your thing. But do you, I hope you have other things where you're doing something, where you're producing something. Find it, find, like we were saying earlier, find that purpose. And not to say that reading books is your purpose to life, but it gives you a new sense of purpose to drive you in another direction, to mm-hmm. learn something, pick up a new hobby, trade. Well, whatever. you know, that's like uh, whenever you do something outside of your comfort zone is when you meet somebody that really means something to you. Mm-hmm where you find something that really, really enriches your life. You don't find new things by doing the same things over and over again. No, that's your comfort zone. That's your comfort yeah. zone. I call it your whoopee, right? Yeah. You so you got to get out those circles. Well, you've all seen them, two circles, and then here's the little overlap. You're like, right. you know. You mean balance? Because <laughs> yeah. that's really what it well, means. Well, you can drill how many circles that overlap each other and, and play the game of that. But it all goes to that, you know, if, 
Yeah. Want to do one thing, got to step outside your comfort. It's just like fitness. Every three or so weeks to, you know, four, we can get in, we're not going to get in this argument, but every so many weeks, programming needs to change. Yeah. It needs to be adaptable because the human body will adapt. And then, oh, I'm not seeing changes. Your mind is no different. It will become very adaptable and it will get very in tune with those, which then become habits or vices or addictions. Yeah. Because you've not done other things to give it stimulus. It gets a little bit from the stimulus. No different than anyone addicted to alcohol or drug. You need more and more and yep. more because that little stimulus before does not equate to what you need. So Always you chasing need that dragon, man. Exactly. So yeah. it's no different than anything else. Yeah. But if you constantly are stimulating your body in positive ways for, okay, I'm visually watching something or looking at art. I'm reading. I'm listening to something. I'm doing physical. You're... Yeah. Hitting those senses, you're always involving and stepping up your body. You're not dulling things. You're right. stayed and heightened because you're always trying to push a little bit more in a good way Yeah, to get to that next level, but you're always stimulated, so you're always in tuned. Yeah, totally, man. It's a different kind of stimulation. It's um, I can attest to that. It's one that it's a it's a beautiful feeling. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a hair standing on end, cold, kind of shivering feeling when you know there's nothing there to make you feel that way other than what's in your own mind. Oh, yeah. Right? Or the lack of things in your own mind. And I truly believe that you're rewarded whenever you find those places with that feeling. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful feeling. And there's probably people out there that think I'm fucking nuts. But then I know there's other people that you understand what I'm saying, and I love you for it. Yeah. And you people that think I'm nuts, well, I love you too, and I can't wait to see you find out that I'm that I'm honest and I'm <laughs> I'm sincere about this. So speaking of which, earlier on, I'm going to hold to my word. I said that I wanted to put some thought into something. So last week I touched on it, and this week I want to touch on it again because earlier we talked about okay, if you're in front of your spouse or a loved one or at work, colleague, and it's heated and you're going back and forth and you're wrong and I'm right, blah blah blah. What if you could just be in that moment? And you could just de-escalate the entire thing. You could change that energy. You could literally shape that energy with your mind and your words and your actions. You may not be coming out right, mm -hmm. but you will be right in that you set forth a plan of action to diffuse the situation, mm -hmm. step outside of the entire thing and see it as a third party and see it for what it really is, right? You've got your side, my side, and the truth, Yep. right? That's how it is. Um and you could just be. You don't have to win to know you're right about something, and you don't have to be right about something. Like we said last week, whoever your God is, whatever your God is, it's not you. Mm -hmm. Unless you were divinely appointed somehow the truth seeker or the justice doer in the world <laughs> when you were born, if you were, I'd love to hear about it. You come on the show and tell us about it. I don't think that even when you're standing there on your pulpit preaching how right you are about something, metaphorically, that you understand it doesn't fucking matter if you're right. Nobody in this world gives a shit if you're right, and neither should you. Yeah, You should just be. And when things happen around you that you may like or not like, remind yourself, not for me to decide if that's good or bad. Uh, that's, I'm that's not most God. Most people always want to have an opinion and put your reasoning or belief down to be right when what what does it matter if you're right or wrong? It doesn't. Exactly like you're saying. It doesn't. What, are you going to get a, a prize? Yeah, like... Huh? You're going to go to bed with, with a bigger, you know, you prime, know what? I mean... Prime, what, prime example to put this is I listen to our governor every day talk because I got to want to be on top of any new developments, let my staff, let my members know. Right. You know... Today, you know, this, and I'll listen. I'll put my headphones in. I do other work because I usually don't just, there's no point to watch. It's just him talking or the doctor or whatever. And sometimes I'll look at the comments and you watch these people and you watch like someone like, okay, hey, you know, can't wait for Biden. Can't, you know, Trump. Okay. Then you'll see people going back and forth with them. Oh, you're stupid this. And then they'll have this or they'll spit out some fact. Well, that's completely wrong. Why even comment? Yeah. If you all just sat those things and did not respond to one another, there would be no stupidity going on. Well, maybe I'm going to say it's stupidity. Yeah, but there would be no ill hatred of watching people bicker back and forth. It would just yeah. be okay. There's your comment. Cool. Here's mine. 
you're just stating an opinion, but no one else gets a verb back. I'm going to say this. No one else gets to say anything back. That's right. You say what you want. Yep. No one else gets to say anything back. But that's not how social media or the internet works now. Everyone yeah. gets keyboard, you know. Well, nobody that's doing that is living by those two words. Nobody is just being. No, and I'm just watching some of these people who are repetitive in it. And it's sometimes it's entertaining, but then it's also sad at the same time, like, I'm just listening. I watch for like a good couple minutes. I'm like, all right, I'm done with that. I'm just going to listen to, you know, hear what they're saying there and starting to talk about st- statistics of the day and everything. And I'm like, not even to go back and read these comments, but it no. was just like, they're so bad to one another. Well, that is a direct reflection of Twitter. Twitter is the same way. So oh, all yeah, of these just, instantaneous comments, like the old message board style that's now, you know, oh, yeah, amp- it's just, and it's amplified. It, there's no good coming out of any of that. That's not good. That's not, that's not good. Not unless you're taking something from what someone said. And okay, it so still goes that you'll fall. You still goes on the path of you're following their opinion. Which so if right we take a pile of good and a pile of bad that comes out of that, the pile of bad would dwarf the pile of good. Oh, pretty much on social media. Okay, yes, it seems so stay way. the fuck off of it. Yeah, I mean seriously, if it's affecting you, if it pisses you off, if you find yourself, you have to comment on things. I've been there, guilty. Yeah, get the fuck off. I, I give don't it a remember, break for a day or two or three. That, since social media became in existence when I was in college, you know, Facebook being the first part, well, I don't know, MySpace, nah, MySpace. MySpace would say MySpace, never mind. Of that is never to sit there, did I ever, so that I, you know, I could go back, you know, and, you know, hear these athletes, you know, like, oh, they said this on Twitter or someone, oh, they said that when they were 16. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, sucks, I don't have to worry about that, just none of this existed when I was 16. But I didn't say anything stupid, you know, on social media. I'm not worried about it, but I'm not going to comment because what good is it going to do? Yeah. Then some idiot's going to come back back to me. Then they'll go to my page and comment random stupid shit. Start up something for for what? Are we going to be internet trolls to right pounce each other virtually from afar? Like there, there's no point to it. And then all it does is stress people out. I'm watching, and there was one good person that bunch going, why why even comment? Why would you say something like that? None of you should be comment. That okay? That's your opinion. Fine, have it. You guys, like, literally this lady was just trying to defuse all these people. And then I'm sure she gave up on that and continued to look. But she was literally trying to, why even comment to it? That's your opinion. Have at it. Man, you're absolutely right. Check this out. You got a government. Let's say, all right, I'm going to say something polarizing here. But I mean the best in this, okay? My intentions are true. If you look at, let's say, a 1980s depiction of an African, a mid North African village, white people, not there. It's it's all indigenous people. Mm -hmm. The way they live their life is the way that they are ruled. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's say you go to a fishing village in Greenland. Okay. And let's say they make a rule that says there's nobody that can fish our oceans within 20 nautical miles of our coast. I don't know. I'm making this shit up. I'm just saying. Do their people live by that? They do, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. In America, we are ruled by crazy fucking crazy. <laughs> how are we living, Jeff? Well, how are we living? As a people, right now, we're fucking crazy. Because there's not one, we're not on the, well, we can say we're on an island, it's just a big one on the continent, but as a country, we don't have a fine line of leadership. We don't. Across states. We don't, there's no trust, across, there's nothing... <laughs> Across the whole spectrum because there's too much gray area that people always want right. to interpret. There's right. no, that those original amendments, well, there's how many been, we got good ones that have been added, thankfully, yes. But all the amendments mm-hmm. since from one till, you know, what we get 28? God, that's bad. You don't know those. There's, there's 28 of them in there. I believe so. I think. If you're listening, sorry. <laughs> bad Americans here. But all those from one to whatever, they all serve a purpose in, guideline to prevent things from going backwards right but then they're all interpreted to agree you know second amendment can be God, people will go nuts with it you know say hey whatever so the first as well first you yeah, know that yeah. i'd say more so the first and the second but right. you know everyone like, hey i like guns too but whatever but freedom of speech freedom of press all these things especially now on social media because now your freedom of speech can be muted because you don't follow our guidelines. Right. That is not within what we're doing here. Yeah. Now you get muted, right. blocked. Right. But there's no clear-cut way with 
our country, and I'm sure there's other countries I'm sure that go through this, that those old ways that everyone has followed are very blurred, listen, if non-existent. Listen, we have, we have been the, the tip of the spear on how many campaigns, how many battlegrounds, how many wars. We are a country that lives and dies by the military. We do. We got a that, badass one. That military industrial complex that I was a part of, still am as a retiree, that does not generate a society of loving and compassionate people. That generates a society of people that are ready and willing and anxious to go to war. That's I would assume how you That's how we're trained. being governed. That's how we are being governed. We are being governed by the commander in chief of a military driven country. Yeah, but it's very rare to say that we would go to a holistic society. Even if you go back to ancient Japan, the samurai, which translates to surf, Mm -hmm. they would have a lot of, you know, Japanese emperors would do uh, calligraphy with um, sumi ink and, you know, their brushes and stuff made from horse mane, and they would do calligraphy, doing their kanji. And... And then they would practice with their boken wooden katanas or samurai swords, whatever you guys want to go with. And, you know, they had their katanas and all that kind of stuff for battle and all their armor. But they practiced peace, mm-hmm. ultimately, trained as if they were going to war. But even if you read, like, Sun Tzu, The Art of War, or even Miyamoto Musashi's, you know, Book of Five Rings and all these mm-hmm. great warriors, the majority of that is talking a piece of, if my opponent does this, I do this to block. Right. And then, yes, they'll talk about how you end, but all of it is teaching you things that how you can avoid the bigger grand picture. But if you right. need to attack, if you must, you should be the one standing on top because right. of deliverance practice. But the ultimate overall thing is not to constantly go to war. Right. But see, that is our constant thing. We well, live the world one war a, to the, the next. The world wants to be a more dominating figure now versus... I don't think the world does. I think a few people in the, I, it, and the well, gov- that, that the make world, up the government. The big countries of the world want to have dominance. So you got your government and you've got your your massive corporations, right? And your military is affiliated. Your, yeah. Your, right? So they run the country. Well, it's, Plural. It's, they run the countries around the globe, not just here. Well, yeah, it's, it's become true. that way everywhere. Um, you know, China, as much as we say, oh, we hate this about that about whatever – they're running their own country into the ground to manufacture goods for the rest of the world. How would you like that? Yeah. How would you like to live there too, right? Like, so what I'm saying is we're all having this done to us. And we are. As a people, I think we want love. We want peace, compassion, Mm -hmm. right? The whole thing, peace, joy, the whole hippie thing. Does anybody want to go to war and kill a lot of people? No. I mean, really. Well then, why do we keep letting people take us into that? That's what that, what's what I'm saying. If I don't want to ever be in politics, but if I can get somebody's ear, and I think it'd be pretty hard though to say that you're enlisting into the military to be our current military, sure trained. But if it was a military that was built on the well, you the, could have it as a military of I'm training you for a police force. I'm training you for medical. I'm training you for food right. chefs. Sure. I'm training you for trades. Yeah. I'm training you for pilots. Sort of like the reserve system. Exactly. You're learning another skill set that you could potentially take and go do something else with. Absolutely. And that's what I did. And I loved it. And I'm not saying a bad thing about it. But no, that you would have to change the whole structure system of... That's what I'm talking about. I'm not training you to be special forces, to be elite, to be able to go in and do that kind of stuff. Right. I. I, But then the world would have to change too, because ultimately you're going to need those badasses to do some things that others won't. Oh, of course, of course, and but nobody it, wants it, to take that it away. It all goes back to you know the Taoist belief at the top, the, the great way. It yeah. literally does is that if everything's within balance of each other, there is no need for warriors. There is no need for this because right. everyone lives within harmony. Now, obviously, again, like Jeremy said, hippie, yeah, talk. But if you ever read, you know, um, Taoism, Lao Tzu's, and stuff like that, um, the Book of Tao, and all those types of things, like that. Kind of explanation, it's all verses going into explaining things, but that's kind of how the outlook is, is that's how the world was when he wrote that. Yeah. 
which I don't know if there's war or not. I'm trying to remember the years, which would be pretty hard because a lot of that is before Christ even. Again, we're going way, 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 way back. Yeah. So not yeah. everything was written down quite right. Was and, you know, we, we've gone a, on a crazy little meander here. But <laughs> but the, the point is, as a people, we can't just be still. As a nation, we haven't been still for decades. No, we never have. You know what I mean? No. I, I don't think that we ever have. We, we've we've I've, conquered. Not since... We first step foot. Yeah, we've conquered. We've ruled. We've been number one. We've been on the path to be number one. How many of us as kids grew up, you want to be number one. You want to be the best at this, the best at that, the best at this. Why, man? You know why? Because nobody ever taught you how to just sit your ass down and be still for a minute and, and enjoy yourself. Most people teach the way of conquer or, you know, kill, kill, kill. Not in the, the It's little, the way of nature. Not in little terms, but... Right. It's Even in nature. nature, nature is not killing, killing, killing. The, you know, lion kills when it's hungry. It just yeah. doesn't see the gazelle and go after it and kill it. Or right. Say cheetah or whatever. Doesn't matter. But yeah. they don't just kill to kill. They kill because they're hungry. They they're feeding their pack. Yep. There's a purpose to it. Yeah. And that's going you know back to all this. What what purpose are you doing if the things you're doing aren't providing a purpose and value? Find something that can maybe give you a new hobby that gives you a purpose that provides value in another avenue that makes you more valuable yeah. to the rest of the world. Yep. Yeah. You know, How about the rest of your household? Make yourself more valuable to yourself. Well, yeah. And that's yeah. like we've talked about. It. We're trying to work on these things. We've had these long journeys of ourselves that hopefully they we continue to work on ourselves. Our family see that. They notice those things. They see that they need to work on themselves. They better themselves. Well, there's 40 years, three to, you know, three total of mine. Well, even if we each do two, well, yep. I got six, you're at eight, yep. then eight becomes 16, That's you know, right. and so forth. 32, right. we can keep going up this ladder. Yep. It's the pyramid in a good way. <laughs> and you know, earlier, whenever I said that you can de-escalate situations, mm -hmm. as you get better at de-escalating your own situations in your life, whether it's in your head or outside of your head, um, you know, externally with other people, what you're going to find is you de-escalate sooner. So, you know, you said something to your spouse and it set somebody off, set something off. No, no, no. This time instead, when you got to your door, you checked yourself. Yeah. You checked this, what I call checking in with myself, right? I check in with myself. Am I free and clear of any negativity or am I going to come in here and bring some shit into my house like shit on the bottom of my shoe? No different in my mind. You catch it there. So when you get inside, you don't say that shit. Yeah. And then eventually, you catch yourself at the garage door. You know, you catch yourself before. You catch yourself in the morning. That's, that's where I say, like, you know, wherever that's from, whatever samurai that said that, your seven breaths. Yeah, man. Take those seven breaths as you're getting ready. If you got little, like, I got two steps to get into my house or my garage. Yep. Stand there. Or as you're driving into your neighborhood, take those seven breaths. Yeah. Or like, you know, it's going to be a bad day at work. You got to deal with some stuff that you're not ready for. Take those seven breaths, calm yourself to yeah. go. You know? So I used to do that quite often so true, man. in my days, you know, an entire drive would use it as a meditation to kind of get myself prepped and ready because I knew what shit storm might possibly await and how to prep and deal with it. And then, you know, when the day is over, you're physically and mentally exhausted yeah. But then that's when you have to keep that going the most because that's when most people, like you're saying, when we get home, we let it go. That's when you need to be the strongest well, with that maintenance of let it be. You'll never be more exhausted than when you do this kind of work, like Jeff and I said, for 12, 16 hours a day. Yeah. When every decision is met with a thought. When you're constantly on call, in a sense, you're on the pedestal and you, you, you are will, not left alone. You will lose weight. You, you will lose appetite. You'll lose hours of the day. You will be exhausted when you go to bed. It's like you did physical labor the whole day because your body has just been dedicated to doing thinking. Mm -hmm. thinking. And you're going to realize eventually, I don't want to think anymore. I just want to sit and be. You know, I'm tired of all this thinking, this hard work. Let me go do something for me now. This hard work's been for me and everyone. Let me go and sit and be by myself now and be still and be mm -hmm. silent, right? It's exhausting. It is so exhausting. So don't think that doing this work is easy, no. right? It's not easy at all, is it, Jeff? No, it's like <laughs> we were saying before, climbing to that mountain peak, 
the good one, it's strenuous. Life is strenuous. It is a marathon. It is not a sprint. But each time you conquer those little bumps, those little peaks, plateaus, let's, I would say plateaus, not peaks, it'll get a lot easier. Yeah, yeah, really totally. Well. And, uh, you know, when you enter the house or your workplace and the first thing that you've already done is cleared your mind, well, the next step isn't going to be the greatest one. You already took that one. Mm-hmm. And then in eight steps, you're going to meet resistance because the elevator is going to be late or it's going to be slow. You might have to take the stairs. When you realize that you've gotten angry about something, that next step should be just like the one from your bed that morning. That's your first new step again. Mm -hmm. And now you get to do this shit all over again. And then you're going to meet resistance. Every day is a rebirth to something new. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, Mm -hmm. man. It's your chance to get in, get out of that matrix, so to speak, at will. Yeah. And, And when you learn how to be still in your conversations, in your trials and tribulations, when you learn to be still in chaos... Or good times, man, you are the master of your domain. Absolutely. You really are, and you can't get any better of that. That's the hardest battle in life. It is, but it's one that we're going to keep on talking about. We hope you guys come back and join us. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much for Always thank you. For being here with us today. We love you. Jeff, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Thank All you. Right. All right, everybody. Uh, y'all have a good day, and we will see you next time. Until then. All right, peace. Not to lose, not to lose, not to lose.